Jesus teaching us, I'm calling you out of the world, but does that even mean calling you out of the ego thinking of the world and calling you out of the beliefs of the world? But remember, the ego set it up, um, like in the Truman Show or like the movie we watched last night, that all of the people uh, are not whole, they're, they're reflecting partial memories. And the goal is to wake up and know your true nature. Now, how does that fit with responsibilities in the world? Well, the ego made them all up, and the Holy Spirit can use what the ego made, but the purpose of using what the ego made is to unwind you from guilt. You know, make no mistake that the Holy Spirit is, is completely devoted to innocence, divine innocence. And you can't, as we had in one of our earlier discussions, you can't both be divinely innocent and guilty. The world may teach you, you can be guilty sometimes and innocent sometimes and the guilty ones go to prison and pay the penalties and the innocent ones go and get stressed out at work, but one way or the other, you know, <laughs> the ego has got, it, this is its system. So, I've described it, it's almost like, um, some people think of like, like buying into the ego belief system, it's like if you had a, if you had a wall or a board and you hammered a nail into the wall and that was getting sunk into the ego belief system that you have to find a way to get the reverse side of the hammer and pull, pull the nail out. Except it's not a nail, it's a screw. <laughs> it's really tight. <laughs> and you can't pull it out with a hammer. <laughs> you know, it's drilled in there. It's oak. <coughs> oak wood. And it's a big, thick screw and it's... <laughs> it's in there tight. And, and that involves a lot of responsibility. A lot of those turns, the threads, that really keep that, that bolt, that uh, screw really in there tight into the oak, is because of all these pseudo-responsibilities that were set up to keep you bound into guilt. Now you have a teaching like the Course that comes along and it says, well, the sole responsibility of the miracle worker he says at one point, and then he says at another point, the sole responsibility of the teacher of God is to accept the atonement for himself. To accept the correction. To accept the Holy Spirit's correction for error. To accept the Holy Spirit's correction for sin. To accept the Holy Spirit's correction for the ego. To accept the Holy Spirit's correction for the devil. It's not a small responsibility, and it's for the whole universe. And you might say Jesus was the first, metaphorically, in time to accept the correction completely. Absolutely completely. And so it shouldn't be surprising that if he, if he, he said, be of good cheer for I have overcome the world, well, that's beautiful. You know, if you could overcome the world, it's, your chances are better that you're going to walk on water, raise the dead, <laughs> perform miracles left and right and left and right, you know, all kinds of things that seem very supernatural. Why is this guy so different than anyone else that he's doing all these supernatural things? Well, maybe it's the Son of God. Maybe it's the Holy Christ. Maybe this is not a human being and that's at the mercy of, of a world that he sees is not real. Maybe he's he is in touch with the Father, so to speak, from the old Christian language. He's, he's in touch with God, and he's in the state of mind of the I Am Presence. He's in touch with, before Abraham was, I Am. You know, he's in touch with, with the Father and I are one. You know, that's pretty strong. You know, that's as deep as it goes in terms of alignment. And if you went to, let's say, a wedding party or, you know, they probably had their equivalent of bars. I don't think they had disco back then, 2,000 years ago. But, but if you went to like a, a meeting place or whatever, and Jesus was there, and you and you tried your typical meetup lines, you know, how you doing? Da, da, da. Where are you from? You know, it's it's going to be truthful. It's going to be heaven. And they're like, wait a minute, that's but what what's that? What are you talking about? You know, are you from, you know, are you from Bethesda? Are you from Bethlehem? Are you, you know, where, where were you born? Heaven. I was born in heaven, and I'm still there, <laughs> and I'm going to always be there. You, if 
if God is your creator, God is your source, and you have a heavenly source, and you remain in heaven. It has to be so. You don't leave heaven. You can't really leave heaven. You can't leave your creator. The ego would say you can and you have, but you can't. So what you start to realize is that the things that weigh so heavy, like taking care of relatives, taking care of mothers and fathers and children and aunts and uncles and all these different things, there's some causation issues underneath all that. The reason all these, these dream figures seem so important, more important than the rest of the seven billion, in fact, <laughs> is because oh, they've got some special things that have gone on, like uh, they brought me into this world. No, the ego brought you into this world. Uh, the dream figures didn't, and certainly God didn't. God didn't create this place. He didn't say, well, you know, I, I, you're perfect, you're eternal, you're innocent, but, you know, have a, have a go around there in time and space and let's see how it goes. God wouldn't send anybody to earth. God didn't send you here. It's kind of like these pretty little stories we get. Oh, with a happy little soul, and you know, and God sent me on a mission into hell. And, uh, you know, thank you, thank you. That's really great. You know. Or I maybe take God out of it a little bit. Okay, I was a happy little soul. I'm looking around at all these planets in the cosmos, and where should I incarnate? Ooh, a little blue, a cute blue planet over there. Look at this cute with all that blue and ooh, blue and white spots, little cloud spots. Isn't that cute? Let's zoom in there. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. That's Croatia. Let's go for Croatia this time. You know, it's you don't even have the power to incarnate. It's a dream. It's a dream that you're here. It's a dream that you're dealing with all this stuff. But a dream is a dream is a dream. You know. The, the nursery rhyme says, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. But no wonder there's so much merriment in that song, because life is but a dream. When you take on the character, and you take on all the aspects that come with it, you take on causation. How did the character get here? We now know it was the ego that projected it, you know. How did buildings get built? How did the Twin Towers get built? The ego projected it. How did the Twin Towers come down? It was part of the projection. Whose script is this we're dealing with? The egos. Is there a Holy Spirit script? No. No. There's not a Holy Spirit script. There's a Holy Spirit perspective that will show you the world simultaneously and show you that it's all your mind.